Hello everyone, Master Xam101 here, and in this video I want to do a quick tip talking about recut. So in order to set this up, we'll just do a few box cuts and just begin just breaking the surface a bit, just creating some visual interest, and then we'll draw a box around that, press Y and make it an extraction, and then we'll just begin repeating that, pressing Shift tilde or Shift R in order to rotate the shape inside. And then of course we can press D, switch back to box, draw another box selection around this, press Y, extract that, and then begin just kind of adding some randomness in the top of this cube. So this cube is a little bit worse than my test demo. However, uh, one thing that we can do with this is um, shift click on bull scroll in order to use modifier scroll we can actually scroll back in time to the beginning of this cube and you know i will draw a box and press period not numpad period but period in order to change it to center draw just during this operation and we'll just slice this out so this is generally what a slice does and then i could take this and just mod scroll it to get back my result with all my bulls inside, I just reverted it to an earlier state to get a jump off point, but that's basically slice in a nutshell. And then the next thing I want to show is basically recut, which is a type of slice. So we'll draw a box and then I'll right click to just kind of stop it in space by just setting it up with release lock. And during this operation, I'll shift click release lock. We'll turn on release lock laser cut, which means that when I click it again, it will actually jump to the laser cut state where you can actually see it paused in this laser cut state testing the um, validity of AccuCut. We can press X to turn this into a slice and by pressing Alt X we can actually slice this back in time the way it originally was. So to show this in action I actually want to select both pieces and keep in mind for this I'm not using active only because I want to cut through both of them using multi-cut. So we'll just draw, click, and I'm able to rotate the view because of release lock laser cut being on. And we can just press X for slice and Alt X for recut. And now we have the result that we want here. So with something like this, I always get in and do a little stuff to it to make it visually interesting. I'll draw a shape, array it, press Shift R to reset it if it gets off screen. Definitely plan to make the next updates a lot more informative. In fact, we have a double inside. We'll just go ahead and remove that piece of geo. But now along the top of this, now that we cut out something interesting at the bottom, we could just draw this down, hold shift, keep it live, and just begin working this piece, cutting the cutter. And you can see in this case, I shifted to live, but I had to shift click again because of the release lock laser cut being on. So sometimes these toggles can work against you if you're unaware of their presence or you forget about them. So just by clicking this, we can turn release lock laser cut back off, which will make laser cut go back to behaving the way it normally would. So by pressing Alt X, I can bring up the hops mirror tool and we'll press X to reset the tool to default and I'll just mirror it to the other side and we can just switch back over to box and just begin cutting in some little trenches and whatever we wanna to do to this shape, jump into end gun and do the same thing. And that, in a nutshell, is what recut is. Of course, to take this cube a little bit further, I will control click this edge with mark in edit mode, but I'll need to scroll it completely up the stack in order to make sure that it survives once we go back into object. And then I can mirror this to the other side, holding shift to keep the gizmo active. And we can even scroll through the cutters of this thing to find the slice, which I always scroll backwards in order to find these slices. And it's probably this one. Sometimes if it's not a big overshooting cutter, it's harder to find. But we'll go ahead and just bevel this one as well. Just creating a nice rounded shape. Select everything and just press Alt-M. And we'll just control click material scroll to just scroll through random material combinations just to get something visually interesting in the viewport. And that in a nutshell is recut.
In order to further emphasize the utility of recut, I figured I would do one more example. So we'll just take this cube and using mesh tools, we'll just sphere cast it, but I'll jump the sub D's up to level four and we'll just use a box and we'll just cut the front out. And so this is like a simple scenario in which I would begin working on one of my sphere cast models. However, in this case, we're actually going to jump to end gun and begin drawing off the mesh in order to just quickly create a shape on the other side. And we'll just extrude that down. And I always start and cut so I can see what's going on on the inside of the mesh. And then I'll press X to transition over to slice. However, in this case, we can press Alt X to transition to recut. And you can notice that I'm cutting out a piece that is rather unique. In fact, it's received part of the piece that was taken away previously with my very first cut. And so with this, I can begin working it from a completely different angle and start getting rather interesting results. So this is something that I do recommend everyone spend a little bit of time just experimenting with. In fact, we'll just mirror this over to the other side using hops. I could have also mirrored the cutter during the operation, but um, for some reason I like doing it using the hops mirror system, which I'll be going into a video on in the future. In fact, for some reason that cut didn't work out. So I will just scroll it backwards and we see that the cut actually did land, but something about the offset just didn't let that take. So sometimes with box cutter, um, and using blender boolean's in general is unpredictable uh, things will happen which will require that you get in and just kind of examine the result that you've received to try to um, get a better understanding of why you actually got what you're dealing with and if the cut actually went through because sometimes you can follow up a cut with another cut and realize that you've actually um, just doubled your trouble in an area instead of getting in there and actually rectifying what's going on so with this circle, we'll shift to live and using yesterday's tip, I will control click mark in order to do a reverse bevel. And now we've uh, just really created this interesting shape pretty quick. And I'll just grab this, jump off, bring this in, tab, press control D. And inside the mini helper, we can quickly change how many segments we want. I'll set mine to 64 and clicking away from it makes it go away which leaves me still in the operation where I can press T and continue making modifications and just get the shape exactly where I want it as far as for this particular concept that I'm going for. But just wanted to show another use case of recut in action just for dealing with pieces that you've already previously removed and also helping them integrate into their surrounding areas. There's so many use cases of this that I haven't been able to cover in this particular video, but I do feel that if you play with this tool a bit, you will find a use that's maybe unique to you, but definitely something that's suitable for your needs. Let me hit the shape just one more time up with some recut. So we have both of them selected. Keep in mind, I'm not using active only because it would use the other shape as the jump off. So I'm just going to use box and we're just going to draw a box along the side and we'll draw it as a cut. We'll press X, turn it to a slice, press Alt X, turn it into a recut. And now we've created this ring in front that's already well integrated into the piece underneath. So all we have to do at this point is just take a circle, bring that in, cut it, remove the double that was created. So it looks like with recut, there still is a little bit of work to be done, but there is a reason that recut is a single use tool, meaning that you can't leave recut on as a constant state. It is something that you have to toggle on using alt X each time. But just like that, we're able to just quickly create another piece to further integrate into this using the power of recut. And then with another circle, we'll just hit it with the reverse bevel to just give it a interior cut on the way in. And that is our result.